It wasn't initially the basketball thing, it was the football thing. We, we, we would go to see Len play football at Columbia Park. He was uh, then, I think, in the sixth grade. We would get to the gym early in the morning on the weekends. Mr. Mackin would open the gym for us. He was the guy that ran the, 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 ran the rec center. And I kept you know, edging him to play basketball. At first, kids used to laugh at him, you know, because he was very awkward, you know, but he kept playing, playing, and then, like, every day he was up there, like, seven days a week. And then the other guys were like, man, he's no good. They would rag on him, you know? As kids, you know, we joke and clown around. So, oh, sit your big sorry behind down. You know what I'm saying? You know, nobody believed he was going to get better, but the whole time in his mind, he was he was working hard. His, his work ethic was dynamite. We tried out for the basketball team at Greenbelt, the junior high, seventh, eighth, ninth. He had gotten cut. You know, we go down to the locker room and you, it's like they call a cut list. You see, if your, if your name's on the list, that means you got cut. He was kind of down. I said, Well, what's up? He says, uh, I got cut. I said, you got cut? So what does that tell you? I was a little skeptical about trying again um, the following year. The second year he got cut, he took it even harder. He kept on saying the whole time, guys, I'm going to get better. That was more motivation. He didn't take it easily. He, he, he thought that he had applied himself. He, he was doing the right things. The biggest motivation that Len got was from that teasing and him determining that he's, he, he was going to be the best. Well, if you really do want to play basketball, you have to keep going out and work at it. Uh, play as much as you can and take criticism. That's where I think I, I've learned to play very well. I took criticism from everyone, even people off the street. I took it and used it positively instead of negatively. Once he got cut to uh, his eighth grade year, he was, he was dedicated to getting better, dedicated to getting stronger, and uh, his ball skills just all, all the way around. You know, he came back uh, from the eighth grade summer going to the ninth grade. He was like, man, I'm doing my best to make the team this year. And uh, he did. He made the team that year. And when we got to high school, which was 10th grade, he made varsity. He was playing on the varsity team. And I myself was playing on the JV. Well, towards the end of my freshman year, uh, in high school, really, I started finding that I could really play. And my coach told me that I could, but I didn't believe. And my father started coming and see me play basketball. And he said, you're really going to be good, so you got to keep working at it. He didn't play that well the first year. It was, a, it was a learning year. The 11th and 12th grade were good years. He worked hard. Coach Wagner had us and taught us how to work hard on the game of basketball. And then it was probably the most well-known example of that. He had went to this camp called Five Star over the summer, and he just gotten better. I mean, he was like night and day, started working out. That's a great basketball environment because now you bring in, you know, players from all over the country, especially all over the East Coast together, you know, under one roof to compete. There was a stage in which two cities produced more basketball players, and I'm talking about kids who realized, or at least thought, they thought their only way up and out was through basketball. We're talking about not New York City. New York City had obviously great playground players and players from all over metropolitan New York, but Chicago and Washington, D.C., those were the two metropolitan areas that just sent scores of people to, into college basketball ranks and then into the NBA. When you became really, really good at the game, what you would do is you would kind of go to different areas to test your game versus players that you've heard of in other communities. I mean, the competition was great. It made you better. And then it traveled just about everywhere around the city to get some ball in. You had summer league games that were great, whether they were Jellif, whether they were Dunbar. And the Washington Post used to have an entire beat of just covering summer league basketball. And that was my beat when I was an intern and when I was a cup reporter. And you could go to games on the weekend and Julius Irving would come in and Ray Williams and, and Gus Williams would come in and play games. And the pros would stay and they would play with kids from high school, and that's how you could hear of a kid who was a senior in high school named Lenny Bias, and you'd be like, who, who is this kid? I saw Lenny Bias play in high school, and let me tell you, he was quite the talent. Raw, youngster, still growing into his body, but you could tell that the talent, the skills were there. Um, and he had the passion. He played with a tenacity, played with a hunger, uh, with energy that uh, was second to none. I always try to be the best that I can be, and I always try to outdo everybody else. So I just go out and play the best I can. I never give up. Every teacher and everybody, all your friends, where are you going to school? Have you decided it every day over and over again? And you don't know. You're just a kid. That's, a, that's a, an unusual kind of pressure. And you want to make the right decision. 
hundreds of letters from schools all over the country. There were um, certain schools that he was interested in and they came to the house and we spoke with them. And they told us about their program. Uh, a couple of them invited him out. He liked Merle and he was right, you know, he was like one of our neighbors. He was over school all the time, watching us practice. And, you know, I saw him play in, in my camp. A great player. And I think I was pretty well done, you know, that what I had understood that he was going to go to Maryland. The process of uh, helping Lynn pick a school, there were a lot, uh, several factors involved. Uh, we wanted the opportunity for um, Jay and Michelle and, and Eric to see him play, thereby be motivated to, you know, see college as well. He made the announcement in, in the library at Northwestern. You know, it, it was a, a sign of, of, of seeing him be successful um, and actually, you know, being able to be a part of it and watch him as he got ready to take that next step. When guys leave to go away to school, they have to get adjusted to a new environment. Say if you go out to the West Coast somewhere or down south, you have to get adjusted to a new environment. I think being home gave me an added sense that I knew where everything was and I could go home and see my mom and dad at all times and now I always have my fan support here.